Hey everybody, it is Comic-Con time again, San Diego Comic-Con, and as you know, I always have one or more elaborate costumes to wear out on the floor, and this year is no exception, except that it is an exception because it's a very different kind of costume. Yes, this is a piece of the costume that I'm wearing. No, it is not a Wookiee. I have already been a Wookiee a couple of times. This will, in fact, end up being a seven foot tall grizzly bear. Mm -hmm. I have made some progress over the past few months. I spent a lot of time making drawings of this before I constructed it. Uh, I then did a lot of work on the interior construction. If you look closely on the interior, you'll see that it is completely hollow. Uh, the entire form of my bear is made up of stainless steel corset boning that I bought online. Um, it enters through the back and it is incredibly lightweight, which means it should also be much less hot and uh, heat exhaustion generating than previous costumes of mine. I will also have some cooling technology built into this, but before we continue, there's still work for me to do on this, the final bit of work. But before we talk about that, let me show you where I've gotten so far. It's cool, huh? Okay, let's talk about it. As you can see, I have a large amount of my bear character totally done. Uh, he's a very rotund, pot-bellied bear. He's eaten a lot of picnic baskets. I think of myself as a hard-edged model maker. Spaceships, buildings, cars, that kind of stuff I can do all day long. But character sculpting is not my forte. So I drew a lot of different drawings of the kind of bear that I wanted to make. I took a lot of different pictures. I thought a lot about the structure of the bear. Um, and I also thought about how I wanted to build it. I wanted the build to be really easy. I also wanted to share this build with other people and I wanted it to be lightweight. Ergo, it's hollow, so there's no structure inside except for the corset boning. Um, and I'm very pleased with this body shape. He's fatter than I thought he would be, but I, I dig it. It's got some character to it. I like the claws. These are polycarbonate claws, by the way, uh, so they're, they won't shatter. I love this fur. I picked up this three inch nap fur and I've been slowly trimming it a little bit, like the arms are slightly shorter than the body hair. That's per normal with bears. I may still do some shaving. It is shaping up really fantastically, but there's one thing that I have not yet completed and it all kind of rests on that. That's the head. Right, you noticed, it's not a bear head I'm wearing. My problem is, is that I want this to feel like a real bear. I don't want it to feel like an anime character. I don't want it to feel like a sports mascot. I want it to feel like a grizzly bear. So it all rests in that face. I'm not gonna make it animatronic. I'm not gonna give it a lot of motion, but I want the face to read and feel like a genuine bear. That's going to be the toughest part. That's today's one day build. All right, so I'm gonna take this off and show you just one of the technologies that I came up with for this, and that's the feet. I'm really pleased with them. Ah, the easy in and out is also part of the design I really like. Uh, and similar to a Wookiee costume, the more beat up this fur gets, the more realistic it looks. So I'm not being very precious about the fur hitting the ground or getting dusty or anything like that. It just makes it look better. So there's my bare body. Here are my bear shoes. Let's talk about these. So the base of this is some uh, one piece molded super lightweight Skechers. I wanted the bare feet to be lightweight because I have a lot of experience with heavy costume shoes and they can really wear you out. I wanted them to be easy to wear and easy to make. I wanted them also to wear well like real shoes. So I made the soles out of leather. Yeah, so here's what I did. I actually made a wooden form of a bare foot I wet molded uh, heavy black Latigo leather onto that form, and then I stuck a shoe in it, poured AB flexible foam around that to seat it in, and then hot glued fabric over the top of that, all while gluing in some polycarbonate claws. This is super lightweight. It weighs only, I think, about 10 or 12 ounces. It is super comfortable. I can wear them all day long, and that is a viable barefoot. 
All right, this is where I started with the bear's head, with a uh, rigid foam bear head I bought from a taxidermy supply online for, I think, about 30 or 40 bucks. Um, this is a great thing about taxidermy supply. Um, there's lots of it. The stuff isn't very expensive, and it's often incredibly high quality in terms of its fidelity to the animal's look. So I've got a good, big, grizzly face here. Um, I then, in order to make it really lightweight, I molded this stuff over it. This is a thermoplastic called Variform, V-A-R-A-F-O-R-M. Um, I bought it from my local casting place here in San Francisco, the legendary Douglas and Sturgis. I think they're artstuff.com, A-R-T-S-T-U-F with one F artstuff.com. Yes, anyway, um, they sell this stuff, heavy and lightweight, Veriform. This is the lightweight stuff, my first test of heat molding this. Oh, right, how does it work? Uh, you simply get it hot with a heat gun or with water, I think it's over 150 degrees, and you can lay it over a form and press it, and as it cools, it stays in the shape of that form. Um, so I then used the heavier stuff to make this, uh, and it sits on a welding harness, a welding helmet harness, on my head. There you go. Now you can see this is a really nice lightweight bear head. I'm very pleased with it. The ears, by the way, are vacuum formed uh, 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 styrene, also bought from Taxidermy Supply. Very cool. Um, so I'm happy with this shape. This shape is good. It comes off of my head in the right way. Uh, it's got a bear look to it, but it's got to have, it's got to feel like a bear. So uh, I need to cover it with fur, oh, which I already did. So let's take a look at that. Um, I have, this is, this is inside out my bare, my bare face pattern. Now, uh, it actually is quite instructive to look at it inside out. You can see how I built it. You can see there's two pieces of fabric for the nose. There's a wide piece for either side of the face. Um, a couple of long pieces that come over the top, and then some pieces that come down the back and around the sides. Um, right here, you can see I've taken some Veriform, painted it black, and uh, this is how I'm going to see out of the bear. I'm going to see through its neck. I've hung some little spindles of hair there that I can see through, but you won't necessarily see me, so I'm hidden. Um, now, one of the reasons there's so many different pieces of fabric making up the bear's face I looked at some teddy bears and found that they're often much simpler in terms of their construction, is because I wanted the hair, the way the hair laid, its nap, as it were, the direction the hair falls to be accurate to a bear. And when I looked at bears, what I saw was their hair uh, comes down on the nose like this, but on the rest of the face, it all comes back from the eyes. It's like they're built to swim or to be streamlined. So I had to mark, as you could see on the fabric, the direction of the nap of the fur on each piece. Uh, and that helped me to understand exactly how these should be sewn together. Now, let's turn this inside out. Okay, so you can also see that I've been playing around with different lengths of bear fur. It's very close around the snout, like it is on an actual bear. Uh, he does not have ears here because his ears are here. There's just these little pockets. Actually, let me just slip this all over and we can show you how this goes. So, ears just slip on there like that. Then, uh, let's see here. That's good. Um, the thing I like about the Veriform is it's very tough. Uh, it takes a lot of abuse and is very reliable. Okay, so here is where we currently stand with the bear head. And I'm very pleased with how it's going. But the closer I get to finishing, the more nervous I get because it's all about the character. It's all about does this feel like a bear? Does he feel like a bear or just a cartoon of a bear? I want the answer to be the former. Um, so it all rests on how I get those eyes right. Do they feel like they're staring at you? Does the mouth mm, have a, a point of view? I think that's mainly what I'm talking about here. I'm really pleased with how the ears look. I'll glue those in soon. Um, the technology for looking through it works pretty well. Let's take a look here. There we go. So I can see comfortably out the front of my bear, 
Structurally, I'm really pleased with this. From a character standpoint, I'm terrified. But that's the task today. I'm gonna make some eyes, I'm gonna make some lips, I'm gonna make a lower jaw, I'm gonna get this all glued up and shaved properly. The hair still needs some trimming and clipping. Um, and then I should have my completed bear costume. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Oh, right. I've also got to fix his nose. I've got to give him a bear nose. One of the things that's really lovely about Veriform, that's this white stuff, uh, is that with hot glue, it's pretty much indestructible. So like the hot glue gets a really good grip on it. Um, you might not know this about me, but I spent a few years working on Beach Blanket Babylon, a San Francisco institution stage show here in the city back in the early 90s. And Beach Blanket figures features all of these super elaborate hot, big wigs and big hats. Um, and this stuff, Veriform, is the soul of a lot of those giant wigs. It's super lightweight, easy to form, um, and not that expensive. Okay, here we go. One ear is in. I'm putting some glue on the inside and some glue on the outside. Okay. There you go. Uh, I gotta get his nose right. And I have a uh, sample nose. Oh, this is, this is actually a bit of inspiration that I've got here. It's a smaller bear skull. It's an actual bear skull though. This was a present given to me by a girlfriend in New York many, many years ago, purchased at the Chelsea flea market. Oh yeah, I remember the Chelsea flea market. Um, I've had, this is the very first skull I ever received in my collection of bones. Um, so it sits on here for some inspiration. As you can see, I have some other bear parts that I've collected, including a jaw, an actual bear jaw, if I want such a thing, but I tend to think not. Um, here is a lower lip that I made. Um, this is using some fur and some kit leather. So I'm gonna tackle this problem in a couple of stages. First will be the nose and the mouth. There's a nose. First will be the nose and the mouth. It's actually not incredibly bad. I might be able to do better. Okay, so first is the nose, then the mouth. Then once I get the mouth right, then it's the eyes. That's an order of difficulty. The nose, the eyes, the mouth. Um, this is one where I know I like to say that I start with the most difficult part first, but in this case, I'm starting with the easier part because getting the character right is really, really difficult. I, I molded this nose out of ABS plastic over the rigid foam form. I'd like to try another one. This is actually Kydex. This is a thermoplastic often used for knife and gun sheaths. Uh, it is thermally formed, so I have a, a heat gun, and I'm gonna try and form another nose out of some Kydex and see how well I do. Soft. Let's see what I can do with it. Oh, wow. This stuff is hard to mold. I kind of really dig it. It's just going to take me a few tries to get this right. I'm pleased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. 
want to try a second one so I have something to play with. Not quite as good. I'll try it again. Oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah, I like the Kydex much better than the ABS, that's for sure. It's time to get some reference material going. Loving how the nose is laying down. It's distorted a little bit, but I can I can come back from that problem. That's a solvable problem. I'm sad that the nose is causing me so much trouble, but we'll figure this out. Fabric over there. But I kind of like this. I kind of like this. He's a little off kilter, but that kind of makes him feel right, you know? Now I'm doing most of this construction with a low temperature hot glue, and that's because I want room to move. I want room to undo things that I've done that I don't like. Like this nose, I, I gotta redo it. It's, uh, it's not working. So the low temperature hot glue gives me a little bit of flexibility in that regard. Thank goodness. I like that. I like it right there. Now, how to get it to stay. I like how matte it is. I like the size of the nose. It looks pretty good. Let that set. Now to trim these, I just bought a, a really nice set of uh, professional trimmers for shaving your head. And it came with all of these attachments in a bag. So I had to build the, um, the Savage trimmer box to hold it. Isn't that nice?
sit there and think about what you've done. While all of that is setting, let's take a look at the eyes, shall we? Now, these are taxidermy eyes for bears, but I don't think that tells the bear story I want to tell. Uh, that definitely not. These evil beady eyed bear. Let's try gray. Uh -uh. No. Oh, how about this? Zoinks! Uh, yeah, no, it's totally not what I'm looking for. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, about there. But I did pick up these black marbles. I also have these safety eyes. <laughs> it looks like a llama. Uh, I think for the eyes, I'm going to figure out their position. And then I'm going to cut a slice. And then I'm going to make an eye with an eyelid. Bear's eyelids are a key part of them. Uh, same way that I use this kit leather for the lip line, I'm going to do the same with the, with the eye line. Um, and we'll see if that can't give me a little bit of character out of the thing. Because this is just cartoonish. None of these feels quite right. Bear's eyes are bigger than that, for crying out loud. I mean, now I have a good collection of eyes. But, see, I think that's going to be the right size. I just think I have to set them back inside there. All right. So I'm working on the uh, second nose. Actually, second to you. It's like the fifth nose that I've made. This one I'm very happy with. Um, I'm going to try holding it on to the bear with some elastic. I don't want to glue it on because I want some flexibility later. So we're gonna try and keep me flexible for that. Yeah, it's not under a high amount of pressure. It's totally adjustable. All right, now what to attach it to is the question. Yeah, I'm tying the elastic inside this that uh, allows me to hold the nose in place. I'm sorry I can't show you, but I can't even see in there. There's only enough room for my hands. Okay. All right. Bear. Bear is looking like bear. Oh, I still have to put some more hot glue in there to secure. Oh, oh, oh. All right, bear. Let's try this again. All right. Let's figure out where the eyes go. How are we going to do that? I'm going to set up a mirror. <laughs> Sorry, you just made me laugh because he, he's looking pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to set up a mirror. I'm going to put on the bear mask. I'm going to use some black tape and figure out where his eyes position is the best. I've ended up with the eyes pretty much exactly where they are on the bear head I was working with. They're going to be a little bigger than that. I'm discovering something really, really cool which is that um, I'm sewing around the eye uh, through the variform, and it's actually giving me a huge amount of control over the shape of the bear's face. I've been able to give him some sort of old bear wrinkles under his eyes a little bit, um, and I feel like that's very evocative from a character standpoint. I didn't expect to be able to get so much out of uh, just using a needle and a thread, but that's what I'm doing here. Watch on this eye over here. I want to pull this up a little bit. So I come up above the eyebrow there with a little bit of thread. I come back down and you'll see when I pull, the thread disappears, but I get, I get a little bit of, 
get a little bit of eye action there. See that? Yeah, that's really nice. I think, I think I've got a bear face there. All right, so one of the other things about bears is their hair isn't all the same color like my bear is right now. Um, their hair is many different colors and there's usually some dark around the eyes. So I am going to give him just a little bit of spritz of dark at the eyes. This is a staple of film special effects streaks and tips um, in a dark color. And let's see if I can't give him a little bit of character, just a quick spritz. Before I get too excited and start really dressing him, I feel like we're very, very close. So I wanna dress my bear up on the stand and do some final tweaks, but um, I'm feeling very good about it. Dudes. Dudes. He's a regal bear. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Bear is pretty much done. It's time to take him out for a spin. You're wondering how I'm gonna stay cool in here. Well, I've built it wide open on the inside, actually like a mascot costume, uh, because there are systems for cooling down mascots, and I'm gonna try one. Um, I've got one right here. It's a battery-powered chest pack, so I'm gonna wear that. I'm also gonna have a, a walkie earpiece in so that my crew can talk to me, because we're gonna take the bear out here in the Mission District. We're gonna go on a little walk. Yeah. Test, test, test. One, two, three. Okay, let's go on an adventure. Here we go. That was awesome. That was really, really fun. And this costume is not too hot. I am, I'm, that couldn't have gone better. Comic-Con, here we come. <laughs>